Hello and welcome back to Business Studies. Now today we're going through efficiency and what we're looking at here is we're looking at two different ratios. Now these are the expense ratio and the accounts receivable ratio and we're here to clear up a couple of different misinterpretations for it. So let's get through it. Now the, when we're using ratios associated with efficiency, we're looking at how well the business manages its operations and resources, repays its liabilities, keeps expenses under control, and efficiently collects its accounts receivable. This can be used to compare expenses to budgets and adjust accordingly. This is normally done by an expense ratio or total expense divided by sales. And this is what it looks like when it's actually in the formula. It's total expenses over total sales. Now, typically, we want this to be as low as possible. If it's lower, it means our expenses are lower. Therefore, we can be making more money. Now, you can leave this as the fraction that it comes out as, or you can choose to divide it by 100 over 1, which will give you the percentage. Now, personally, I prefer the percentage. I think it just looks nicer, but you can leave it as the other one if you want to, and we'll go through that when we get through some samples. Now, Expenses only gives us half the actual solution for efficiency. Expenses looks at how much money that we're spending on each product or service that we're making, but we also need to know how good we are at collecting our accounts receivable. So, however, simply making sales is not good enough. Businesses need to be able to quickly collect on accounts receivable to ensure a secure cash flow. When measuring the accounts receivable turnover ratio, it can be done by dividing sales by accounts receivable. This will give you the number of times in the given time period that you have actually collected on the accounts receivable that your business has. So when we're looking at it in a formula, it comes out like this, sales over accounts receivable. Now, after we've done the previous step, which shows us how many times the business collects on their accounts receivable, we need to find out how many days on average there are between those collections. So I want you to keep in mind that the previous formula that you've just seen, if they have given you, let's say, an accounting period of a year, it will show you how many times in that year that they have collected on their accounts receivable. The one that we're going to be looking at now is on average, how many days does it take for them to collect on their accounts receivable, how many days in between each of those collection periods. So this can be done by dividing 365, representing the number of days in the year, by the answer of the previous equation. So this is what it looks like here, 365 over the answer to the previous equation. So what does this look like when we're actually doing it in a HSC question? So this is one from 2018. And there was actually two questions uh, connected with this one, but we're only going to be going over one. So a business provided the following financial information. We see sales, owner's equity, accounts receivable, cost of goods sold, and expenses. Now, for the sake of the question that we're going to be doing here, there's really only two that matter for us. It's accounts receivable and sales. Now, you will also see that it gives us a little bit of additional information in the box underneath. Gross profit ratio equals gross profit divided by sales. That's for the question that we could do alternatively to this that we're not looking at. And accounts receivable turnover ratio equals sales divided by accounts receivable. Now, I do want you to know that it gives you half the formula there. And a lot of people are going to be fooled by this. They're going to see sales divided by accounts receivable and think that's the entire answer. When it's not, there is actually a little bit else attached to it, which we will go through. So the question that we're looking at is what is an average number of days the business takes to collect its debts? And we have a couple of different options here. So we're going to use our formula that we were looking at before to answer this one. So of course, we're using the accounts receivable turnover ratio formula, which means as we're looking up here, we need to do sales over accounts receivable. So this means we're going to be putting 600,000 over 41,000, okay? That's sales over accounts receivable. Now, this is going to give us 14.63. Now, the 14.63 here, 
represents the amount of times in that year that a business will collect its accounts receivable, okay? But the question is not asking us how many times a business collects its accounts receivable. The question is asking us what is the average number of days it takes for the business to collect the debts. So basically, if a debt comes in for the business, how long will it take for that debt to be paid off? How long will the credit be extended for? Now, to get that, we have to take our previous answer of 14.63. And we're going to put that in the bottom of our fraction here. So 365 representing the number of days in the year over 14.63. Now, what this will give us is 25. What this means overall is it takes 25 days on average for this business to collect the debt. Not too bad, not great either. We could certainly improve on that and we might be asked an interpretation question after that. But for the sake of this multiple choice, that's all we had to do. So the answer to this one is of course, B, 25 days. Now, something that got a lot of people confused, because there are actually two different ways of working out this last section here where we get 25. But for the sake of this exercise, I'm not going to tell the other way because it will just end up confusing you. This is the way that I want you to follow because the other way that we can look at, it leaves us a bit of misinterpretation for the fourth, the first step where we actually get the 14.63. So you'd get the fine, uh, same final answer, but the first step is incorrect. And I just don't want you to get confused with that. Now, the second activity that we have, which is provided to us by the financial accounting book by Linda Joel and Greg Hanley, is a whole table where you're basically just practicing your ratio skills. Now, I've gone ahead and done the first one for you and filled out both columns. Okay, so when we're looking at this first one, it asks us to find the expense ratio. So this one is far easier than you think. So for the expense ratio, we're going to be doing the expenses over the total sales. So this, of course, means that it's going to be 8,500 over 65,000. This will give us 0 0.1307. Now, technically, that answer is correct. However, it looks a lot better if we times it by 100 over 1, which will give us our final result looks a lot better, 13.07%. This means that for every dollar that we have, 13.07% of it was, was expenses. Not too bad, but as always, we're trying to get that percentage lower. So that is our answer for the expense ratio, but at first one, 13.07%. The next one, the account receivable turnover ratio, is when we can sometimes trip over ourselves. So we know that it's going to be sales over accounts receivable. Now, keep in mind for this example, it does not actually say accounts receivable, it uses an alternative name, credit sales. They mean the same thing in this context. So we're gonna do 65,000 over 5,600. Now, this will give us 11.61. Now, I always recommend when you're doing financial maths that you try to limit your decimal points to just two. It will make things simpler in the future. Now, after we've got 11.61 here, this represents how many times in a year a business will collect its debts. But we are not wanting that answer. We want to go a bit further than that. We want to know how long it takes between those periods for the business to collect the debt. So if they get a debt tomorrow, how long will it take them to collect on it? So to do this, we need to get our answer of 11.61 here, and we need to put it in the bottom of this fraction here, and the top of that's gonna have 365 represented days of the year. Now, once we've entered this, it will give us 31.45. This rep represents that it takes 31.45 days on average for a business to collect its debt. 
Okay, so not the best one. Generally, anything over a month, we're starting to look a bit concerned at. So now we can see how to work out these basic ratios. It's up to you to do the other ones by yourself and work out what these actually mean and interpreting them. I hope that cleared up a couple of different things for you. And if you have any other questions, please feel free to ask.